Hey yo, everybody, welcome to the Malcolm Games Lab. I am your host, Shannon Hagler, alongside Kina Johnson. People keep stealing our microphone, so we've had to improvise, hence the microphone. If it's bad quality, I apologize for tested it at theme time. But... Return the goddamn microphones. I should just leave mine in my car. That's what I should do. That's it, that's right. That's Put in the gold do that. I want to spray paint it gold first, though. <laughs> just because. Yeah. I'm thinking like gold icing or something, but that's not practical at all. No, not at all. Um, if you enjoy what you're about to watch, please leave a comment below and like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, email us, show, email us at amalgamshow at gmail.com. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash amalgamshow. Um, where you can listen to the Amalgam Archaeology series, which we should probably do another bit on now that you've finished more Final Fantasies. Yeah. We'll take a look at I've, some of I've got one more left to finish. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have finished. Uh, yep. <laughs> then, he's, then he's back where the rest of us are. Well, um... Also, check us out on social media at The Amalgam Show. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And, of course, the website, www.theamalgamshow.com. The next show we would do if we were to do it normally would be 789 and 8, so I haven't finished, so... Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought mm, we, we were going to do 7 as, like, a standalone thing because oh, yeah, there's so probably, much to dive yeah. into. And then we can do 8 and 9 on their own when you've finished 8. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to do... Did we do 10 already? We haven't done anything else other than the first six cards. Okay. We just talked a lot about yeah, 10 and 13. 10 and 10 too kind of get its own, and then 13 gets its own because of the trilogy. Yeah. And we'll work through that. Um, but now that that's all out of the way, <coughs> what have you been playing? Uh, uh, Google Docs. Google Docs. <laughs> it's, I've just been playing around with that a lot. Um, <laughs> Control Shift Eight is really good function. What does that do? Points. Oh, uh, Control Shift Seven does number points. Yep. Um, yeah. I found out the Shift F three function, which does. So if you highlight words and do Shift F three, you can alternate between all lowercase, oh. all caps, or the third option where it capitalizes each individual word. I know there's an option for that, but mm. I didn't know there was a shortcut for it. Yeah, there's a shortcut for it. I found that out at work. It's great. No one accepts yeah. it. Yeah. It, it's really good for titles. Like when you just highlight the title, yeah. it's go Shift F3 a couple yeah. of times and you're done. But yeah, Google Docs is a, a good program I recommend <laughs> for everyone. Um, and other than that, fuck all. Okay. <laughs> I've played the first two chapters of Astral Chain. Did you actually pick that up or is that a demo? Uh, the game, yeah. I, okay. Yeah, downloaded it. It's, cool pretty good like even in the first two uh they're called files mm -hmm. because you're a cop a cop yeah um it's already introduced some interesting mechanics that i haven't seen in other games because what it is you attach to your demon chimera i think chimera, they're called that's right, yeah. yeah um and what you can do is you control them by holding R2 and the right analog stick. Okay. So you can, like, move them around the field. Mm -hmm. So, which means, unless you're really dexterous, you stop moving. Right. Yeah, I couldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you move it around, and then, like, with the chain, it's like the actual chain between the two of you, you can do interesting stuff. Like, if you wrap yourself, wrap the chimera around them, it'll trap them. Okay. And they're stunned. Or... If they like do a charging motion at you, mm -hmm. um, they'll get stuck in the chain and then it rebounds and then they hmm. like bounce okay. backwards and then they're paralyzed. Okay, so the chain itself is a mechanic that can... Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I'm like, yeah, this is interesting. For the most part, the Chimera like auto attacks, but it seems like I can make it do stuff later when I unlock do okay. like R2 triangles yeah. and stuff. It's So far, it's already deep, which is good. Yeah. And then the story is just... Like second level already in Cyber Hell or whatever it is. <laughs> it's a platinum game. Yep. yep. <laughs> Which I knew we would get to that sort of stuff eventually, but I, I thought it'd be a little bit later, but like, yeah. they just literally... They just dump you straight into it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, How's it look? It's good. Yeah. yeah. I like the art style. Um, I think... I know some people like criticize it like that it kind of looks like Vanquish in terms of its graphic quality, mm. but I think it looks better than that because... Mm. Like, yeah, the Switch, just, people know how to design for the Switch with its artistic limitations. People, yeah, people are starting to realise how you can use the Switch's power to its advantage rather than a disadvantage. Although Platinum's been doing that, uh, doing this kind of weird thing for a while now where they tend to... They tend to not... Um, I don't know, pick a Platinum game and tell me it's realistic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like Nier is probably the closest, but it has such a style but it's, to it. Yeah, but it's such a, like, the the graphical quality in that game is so pulled back. Like, yeah. you know, I've 
criticized it before by for, for it looking like ps2 assets in certain places yeah. but that's an artistic choice not necessarily a limitation of the system because it's a runs on ps4 it could literally do anything it wanted to yeah. um so they tend to just not care about that kind of stuff they yeah. seem to prefer to pick an artistic style that matches the gameplay yeah. rather than going for ultra realism and having yeah. that kind of thing which is good because i think like very few games can actually do ultra realism and keep the 60 frames per second keep the mm-hmm. high combat like mm-hmm. dmc 5 can do it but that's because the re engine is just a fucking beast of an engine yeah yeah um god of war is the closest i've seen to like realism yeah. and keeping that frame rate and keeping that that yeah. resolution high it still dips occasionally yeah i'll forgive a couple of dips though because for the most part that thing runs like butter like it's just yeah. smooth as hell um, um but that's also a first party game. yeah exactly yeah yeah like yep. yep. technically actual chain i don't know if it's first party but it's at least second party it's exclusive to the switch exactly yeah so yeah. Yeah, and Nintendo generally funding new game, uh, <laughs> <laughs> platinum game, except with Neo. Is what I was gonna say. Yeah, new, yeah, yeah. Um, I keep doing like research on Neo, and every time I find out something more interesting about it, like, of course, I should realize. But the art designer was the like tactically release. Yes, guy. yeah, 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 yeah. And there's this really interesting situation now where I start to realize that it's it's the next Red Dead in that um, people are looking for a near two. It's like, no, near Automata is oh. near two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. Was like, no, there's, there was Red Dead Revolver, yeah. then there was Red Dead Redemption, and then they just called Red Dead 2. And you're like, no, but te- technically, no, yeah. there was a first game, and it's not great. Um, that technically not even the first game of the series. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Dragon Guard. Exactly, yeah. But even then, when you look at like, the near stuff, it's like, and even Red Dead Revolver, like, it is the first game, and yeah. it technically does set up everything that happens afterwards or before <laughs> fucking Red Dead 2. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, it's the, it's the next one of that lineage of, yeah. like, and no one remembers what the first game is because fuck it, who cares? <laughs> People keep talking about, like, Nia should get a... Like, Nia 1 should get a remake by Platinum. No. Like Platinum, no. it should get a remake, I think, regardless. It should but get a remaster. Someone should HD it up and, and yeah. re-release it. But no. Like, Lee... There are games out there that I think deserve that that deserve the treatment of go back and finish it the way it was intended. Like yeah. whatever whatever ideas you had at the time that just couldn't work because of technology or time or money, yeah. redo them and, and come up with the game that you initially intended to create. But then there are some games that just deserve to be left as they are as like historical touchstones and near is one of them. Like it just needs to be as it is. Yeah. Um, and he's also a weird game because it came out like Pokemon Red and Blue in like it's got the two different yeah yeah. yeah yeah it's super oh, weird important or something i was like i'm not gonna fuck with near itself like no that. no because my my concern is if we fuck with near too much we end up with a kingdom Hearts situation where we have forty seven thousand games and none of them actually work. like and, and you need to play all of them to figure it out yeah. and half of them don't make any sense yeah. and you just uh near automata is an is a nice self-contained thing a, a sequel would be fun yeah. i don't know what you do with the sequel um no. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what you do with that. The only thing that I think would be... only thing I can think of off the top of my head is that you have to do something at the very start in terms of, like, save data. Um, yeah. uh, because of that... Because of the thing that Nier does at the end of it. Um, yeah. Spoilers for a two-year-old game. But because of that, that there, there would hopefully be a way for a sequel to read that. And, like, did you sacrifice your save data or do you still have save data on here? Yeah. And then making a decision as to how that game starts based on that choice. Yeah. Um, and then working from there. Yeah. But from that point on, like, that's all up at Diakotaru because, like, I don't know how... I don't know how much further you can go because Nier Automata is oh, almost a perfect story. Pretty much. Pretty close to it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's a perfect game because yeah. com- combat-wise there are problems, but narrative-wise... Music-wise. Yeah, character-wise, it's it's pretty much perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Anyway. Yeah, no, Astral Chain... <laughs> Astral, seem- how's Astral Chain? <laughs> <laughs> Astral Chain does seem to be the successor directly to um, Neo. Okay. Because it is the same... 
the lead designer became the director. Yes, so yeah. You can definitely see like, there's a two character dynamic. You have you and your twin. Yeah. You are not voice, but your twin is. Yeah. And then when you swap genders, it. It's, it's the other they way. have the other voice actor they didn't voice yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. Whatever. I've heard, you know, that was the thing was I heard about that decision, but the thing is the other protagonist is completely voiced, so why is there not even uh just yeah, that yeah. frustrates me. That it's, frustrates me. Yeah, it's really weird. You can customize your character. It's like change your skin colour, change your hair colour, change yeah. your hair. That's pretty much it. It's yeah. Super basic, but it's fun. And then whatever skin colour you have reflects what your twin has. Uh, okay. What you should do. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's fun. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say, and then to me, Nia is the spiritual successor to a degree of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Yeah, like yeah. A lot of, like the, the to the point where like the beep beep sounds like the codec noise from. Avengers. Yes. Like, yeah, you're that right. There's a bunch of little stuff. Mm, yeah. Um, even though there's very few creative overlaps, what I can tell. Anyway. Mm. Um, actual chain recommend it would love to play it <laughs> <laughs> just too much like Control is a game I also bought um, oh I wow I haven't got around to it at all like, yeah. I loaded it up to see what the options were to, so I could set my options preload mm. and then so I could what did you buy it on? PS4 okay yeah tell me how that runs because apparently it doesn't run great yeah I haven't even heard anything about the Xbox One original, so... Well that was the thing that I actually heard recently was that someone was kind of annoyed there's a, a piece I read or something I heard in a podcast where someone was like, yeah, it's really frustrating because like everyone talks about how the base PS4, it has like frame rate issues and, and yeah. problems like that. Um, but the only reason they're talking about that is because it's the industry leader, like because yeah. everyone has PS4s. Yeah. But the Xbox One version, apparently like the base Xbox One or even the Xbox One S is just a trash fire. Like it's just as bad, if not worse than the base PS4 version. But because no one has those, no one cares. Yeah. And because it runs really well on Xbox One X, everyone kind of gives Xbox a pass. But like it's got nothing to do with PlayStation or like the PS4 being underpowered. It's just that those consoles have been out for six years. Yeah. It's, it's now hitting that point where... Game developers are creating games that are pushing the limits beyond what the thing can do. Yeah. So it's time to go up to the next generation. Yeah, and especially because I know Control has been part of like NVIDIA stuff, and I think ray tracing. Yes, it's got ray tracing. So it's like being scaled back. And I'm pretty sure, except for maybe Quantum Break, most Remedy games come out to like, they don't always run well. Because I remember Alan Wake getting similar criticisms. I don't know anything about the original Max, Max Payne's. But I seem to remember mm -hmm. stuff about, yeah, Alan Wake getting like, oh, it doesn't run necessarily well, even though it's an exclusive. Weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that game. Yeah, that's um, got like a DLC plan, so they're probably updating, yeah. optimizing stuff. <sighs> that actually yeah. kind of bums me out. Whenever I see a game that now has a DLC plan, I always go, God damn it, because that means I'm going to get to the end of the story and then more story is going to come out and I just... Yeah, I'm just one of those people that like when I'm finished your, when I'm finished with your game, I'm finished with your game. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to have to play any more of it yeah. to get the story. Yeah. But I am interested in controller. Hopefully we'll pick it up before the end of the year. Yeah. I some people are saying contender for game of the year, not necessarily the game of the year. I'm like, that's interesting. Like mm. when it runs and actually gets interesting, it's good. Mm. But yeah. So Which is interesting. Yeah. yeah which is I think interesting because like this year's just been pretty Flat. It's yeah. Like, it's even it's like a, looking at the end of the year. It's pretty much like I think it's just going to come down to Resident Evil Two remake and Death Stranding if that's good. I mean, Doom Eternal's up there. Yeah, Doom Eternal if it if it runs well enough and it it does if if it can capture the same emotional highs that the original like the Doom twenty sixteen can yeah. capture that could be an easy game of the year contender. Yeah. Um, especially if they get the multiplayer right this time. Yeah, because they did not get it right last time. So if they get the multiplayer right, that could be a contender. Um, I mean, we'll see how that Call of Duty goes. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think at the start of this year. It's like DMC Five, which is a solid action game. But like, yeah, the thing is, like, most of these games are like, except for Death Stranding, like, like. Iterations on ideas we've seen before, before yeah. as opposed to like, like Horizon or Breath of the Wild or God of War or even Red Dead, they were all pushing stuff as opposed yeah. to the standards have been set. These games this year just 
meeting those standards. Yeah. Which, uh, again, to be fair, we have high standards now. Yes. So, yeah, well yeah. done. I think also the problem with this year was that it started off really lackluster with games, like with, with a game like Anthem, which was the big, you know, and yeah. with games like Anthem, Days Gone, yeah. Metro Exodus, that were all just kind of like meant to be big tentpole releases for these yeah. companies and were just kind of eh to yeah. bad. And that that's yeah. a not a good sign for the rest of the year because it means that people are now clamoring for a smash hit and it's hard to come by. Yeah. But there's still plenty of stuff towards the end of the year that that can that can wrestle for that spot. Yeah. Like Yeah, I mean we'll get more into what you're yeah. doing but yeah, I've got some some thoughts. Yeah. Um I started Final Fantasy VIII Remake. How is that intro? <laughs> It's good. It's I've so seen the good. intro like many times because I always start it on my PSP all the year. I'm like, I'm going to try and play Final Fantasy VIII. And then I'm like, this intro is pretty good. And then I get to the the cuts, uh, to the in-game graphic. I'm like, oh. Oof. Yeah, and it's not. Time, I'm like, oh, Squall has a bandage on? I don't think I ever recognized Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It has a bandage on and like they, they animate that scar the entire, like that's there the entire game. Yeah. You just like... When it's twelve pixels on a face, you can't really tell. Yeah, but yeah, they, they tried. Yeah, and for the time, it was groundbreaking. But it just doesn't hold up because no. technology is advanced. But where'd you get up to? Oh, walking. Like I literally started it okay. to see yeah. how it looked, and then I'm like, "Cool, this looks good." Final Fantasy VIII has one of my favorite. Con- I think this is why I'm liking Fire Emblem so much. Is mm. the conceit of like a school for mercenaries? Like, yeah. let's teach you how to be. You know, we, we we do all the normal school stuff, but also your trained soldiers and your child soldiers, essentially, because they're all teenagers. Yeah. Um, and we're going to teach you how to do that. I think I learned something about eight recently. I'm like, oh, that's what the story's about. Because to be fair, I actually have no idea what eight is about. Like, oh, I know okay. ultimacy is the final boss. Yeah. I know spoilers. I guess I will say spoilers because it's a game that just came out, bring you. But mm. like, Squall dies and then people have like theories about that yeah that's a theory it's yeah. not it's not confirmed in the story at yeah. all although it's it's heavily implied yeah that there is a point in which your protagonist has died yeah um especially by the ending cutscene. it's kind of like you get to the end of it, you're like what the fucking what <laughs> um and then like but the actual core story i'm like i don't know what like everyone's goals are well, it's interesting. well, that's the thing is that, um, and that was the very fascinating thing about this particular game is that they're, um, it's the first game that the the leads actually came out and said, we didn't have a, there's, a, each individual character doesn't have its own, their own motivations to do what they do. It's not a character-based story. Yeah. It is the first one that they kind of coined as an ensemble story yeah so all of the characters intertwined create the motivation and the plot you're not going to find deep and meaningful stuff in irvine or zell like they're not they're not characters that flesh out and become their own people they are a group of characters that together make a story because of their interactions with each other um which is a fascinating way to go about it and but it does create a couple of moments of Okay, sure. Yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and, but it also shows in the music as well because this is the only Final Fantasy that doesn't have like an individual theme for everyone. Oh, um, interesting. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the, the only theme that is in the game is a dual theme. It's... Um, crap, what's the name of that song? The song Eyes on Me. Eyes on Me, yeah. um, which was written for Squall and Renoa yeah. together. It's not, it never plays with one of them. It always plays with both of them. That's yeah. the only theme. Everything else is just <clears throat> music that they've created. But yeah. they do, re- like the music is fucking yeah. fantastic in that game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, story-wise, it, <laughs> it can be a little bit of a clusterfuck. Um, I know 8 is the most divisive of the PS1 games. Like... You either love it or hate it, as opposed to seven and nine, which are pretty much universally loved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like seven in in more recent years has become more divisive. I think like, that's I think of like just hating on popular things, as opposed to. I don't think it's hating on popular things. I think it's the same. Like I get what you're saying. Like yeah. I totally I agree that that is a thing in the world of hating on popular things. Yeah. But I think it's very similar to the Gen One Pokemon problem, which is it's not that we don't like Final Fantasy VII. It's that we're just so sick and like people like me are sick and tired of how much attention it gets. Yeah. Because like yeah, we get it. Like it's the, one of the greatest games ever made. Yada yada yada. We got it. 
can we please just move on with our lives? Because yeah. it's been 22 years. Can yeah. we get to the next step of this evolution? Um, which is what people... This is, it's, it's the complaint that people have about the generation, first generation of Pokemon. Like, yes, they're amazing. They're what we... The, what started the whole Pokemon thing. Yeah. They are the, the, the original. And yes, a lot of them are still amazing today and cannot be beaten and you're not going to be able to get any better than those. But... Yeah. It's twenty fucking nineteen. Can we move on, please? Yeah. And I think that's the that's the sense Sentiment, that I yeah. get from Seven is that yeah. like it, it's it's universally it's universally agreed the game is good, yeah. but I don't know if it's universally loved anymore. I think everyone, yeah, I yeah, sick of it. Sick yeah, of attention. I I think that's sort of the attachment the game is. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of yeah, sick of the reception that it, yeah, yeah, because yes, you're right. Square has. Mm, hasn't stopped milking it. Yes, yeah. taken like years breaks, but I mean from the movie to like, yeah. everything else and that the movie, Dirge really of Cerberus, Advent Children, Crisis Core, like you just keep going and going yeah. and going and going and now we've got a remake that's coming in three parts. Like at least <laughs> it just keeps going. And no other Final Fantasy, maybe apart from thirteen, has received that much attention. Yeah. And thirteen, again, because it received that much attention even though it was not great, yeah. it kind of gets critically panned as well. Yeah. And I think it's it's almost at the it's almost better for the company to in its you know it, maybe moving forward it seems to be better for them to release a final fantasy game into the world and then just forget about it and move on to the next one because when they do that people pine for it and want more of it yeah. um 8 suffers from a few other problems as well like it was clear that they it was absolutely 100% clear that they got um, they caught lightning in a bottle with seven, and they wanted to capitalize on it as quickly as possible. So eight was released a year and a half later, yeah. and you can tell because there are really interesting ideas in every part of that game, from its story to its characters to its mechanics, mm -hmm. that clearly needed another six to twelve months in development because there are just like it's not like it's bad. It's yeah. just that there are glaring holes of like exploits in the mechanics that make the thing just broken. Um, character plot holes that you're like, wait, wait a second, why did that happen? Um, and narrative points that you're like, well, this is just them being like, and end. Like, just as quickly as possible, let's get to the fucking end of this thing. Because yeah. Um, it, yeah, like, it, the game is originally on four discs. Yeah. <clears throat> and 75% of the story happens on, like, the first two. Yep. And then the third disc, I remember when I first played it, I was like, that was incredibly short. Oh, the full of FMVs? No, no. It was just like, it was just like, the first disc was like, there was a lot of stuff to yeah. do. And I was like, wow, this game's going to go forever. And then the second disc has like that same amount because the second disc, the world opens up and then you get more stuff to do. Yeah. And there's a more of a driving factor onto the storyline. And it, it, it just gives it a little bit more... Uh, some of the mysteries start to be unraveled and start to be uncovered, but not everything. And you feel yeah. like, oh, there's going to be like, oh, there's like, the, like if if they keep the same amount of stuff on these first two discs as on the second and like on the third and the fourth disc, yeah. it will it will be in a, a very expansive story. But then I played the third disc and it was like plot point, plot point, plot point, plot point, end of disc. Like it just kind of happens okay. so it's rapidly. Like there's a bunch of new assets that like, you know, weren't necessarily reused. Like no, and stuff. no, like because you do go to a new area yeah. and there's a whole new section that happens, but it's. I'm just trying to figure out from a tech sense, like why would you waste money on an extra disc if it's not necessarily? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's just kind of like, uh, yeah, from from a disc perspective, I think it's just assets and music and yeah. like you know, I'm thinking the four in terms of the fourth disc, like, so the way it works is that when you get to the end of the third disc and you finish that off. Um, it ends in a weird point and then you get to the fourth disc and that kind of like wraps up what happens on the third. And as soon as that's done, there's basically no more story. Yeah. That's the point of the game where it's like, okay, do what you want. Big boss is over there. As you usually what the final discs are. Like yeah. Three and, uh, not three. Seven and nine. It's just, yeah. yeah, you wrap up the last hanging plot thread and then mm. the open world, which you need all the assets on that pretty mm -hmm. much. And then final boss, which yeah. is spectacle as fuck. Yeah, and the but the third disc is really weird because like the second, the first and second do this thing where um, they you've got the open world there and you can travel, but the way the story is built is that it like it makes you go from like here to here to here to here, 
And you're like, okay, cool. So I've seen that part of the world. And then you get to the second disc and it makes you go from here to here to here to here to here and kind of get the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but then the, but, but when you get to the third disc, there's still this entire continent yeah. that you haven't seen yet. Like you, you could have done it anyway if you wanted to, yeah. but you, you know, um, if you're just following the storyline, you will not have touched that continent yet. Yeah. Um, and so the way the discs are laid out is it kind of like, it, it does this like combination of like, here's the story. Also, here's the road trip so that you can see this world yeah. gradually kind of unfold. But then you get to the third disc and you just kind of like a couple things happen. Then you're just dumped in a new city and then everything happens in that city. Everything oh. happens in that city. Every major plot point from that disc happens in one place which is not the way it works in the other discs. Like yeah. major plot points in the other discs happen all over the world. Yeah. And you have traveled the entire globe several times by the time you get to the end of the second disc. Um, <clears throat> whereas, yeah, the third one, everything takes place in one city, basically. Um, and then it's over, and then you get to the next one, and then it's like... Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. And then, then you get to the actual end of it, and Ultimecia and what she's doing, and what the whole point of this is, is kind of like slapped together i'll say yeah like you can see that we're going for something but again 18 months of development was probably not enough time yeah like Give i know ps1 games were spat out quicker mm -hmm. but it's still a big ass RPG game. Yeah, it seems like it needs like i said like i didn't want to say it needed another year and a half but like yeah. six to 12 months yeah. somewhere in there they would have they would have nailed down the junction system because that is the key flaw because you can break the game in your favor yeah. um, within the first half an hour. Like if you want, if you do it properly, if you just grind and get the thing done, you can break the entire game on the first disc so that nothing is a challenge. Which is a shame because if you just play it normally and not trying to break yeah. it, the, the junction system is fun and really difficult to understand. But you can even get by without that system. Like, yeah. it's, it's really weird. It's a, it's a really weird and fascinating idea, um, which I wish they would do, wish they had done more with. Yeah. Because they did that thing of, like, changing the battle system every time for yeah. a while. And, you know, even in 9, though, in, in 9 they went back to the well and they still, they did, you know, the whole... They did trance from that, like... Yeah, but I'm, I'm more talking about, like, the actual, uh, uh, like, items. Items give you abilities, abilities yeah. you learn, then you equip new items and yeah. that kind of stuff. Like, that was an older system. Yeah. Um, yeah. As opposed to, the, yeah, the, the junctioning system. And, like, the, look, tip for everyone out there in Final Fantasy VIII, if you're playing it, don't, don't bother with draw. Draw doesn't do anything. You, you've, draw what you can from the, from the environment, but draw is not, that is not the key. It masks itself as the key feature, but it's not. The key feature is like the abilities your your guardian forces learn and your junctioning system. That's what you need to get good at. If you get good at that, that whole game is. Eh, it can be a combination of really challenging and really breezy. Yeah. Like there are still bosses that even if you break the game just by nature of the way status effects work in that game, yeah. you're fucked. Like you just need you just need to have everything on point before you can take on a Marlboro or something yeah. like that. It sounds like. Since there was so much room for improvement, this because it is this is like the only of the PS One games that is called remastered. Like mm -hmm. it seems like they could have gone in and like done a bunch of stuff, but from all the reports coming out of it, it is uh, a project that has cut corners in terms of the art designs are from Dissidia. Like pretty much everyone's Dissidia models are just popped in. Like that's why people complain about have been complaining about Squall. Is that like, oh, he's just a city of school? Like, you can tell yeah. whose hair and jawline's different from the PS1. Yes, the line. So yeah. Like, that's valid enough. But what it just shows is that they cut corners where they could because mm. it is. it was supposed to be just an upscale. Yeah. Like, 7 and 9 were, but yeah. obviously they couldn't just do that. Yeah. Which... For whatever reason. Yeah. Like, yeah. To spend the money to... Yeah. Again, it's one of those things where, like... Every other Final Fantasy bar seven gets short shrift. Like when they wanted to remake Final Fantasy seven, they fucking remade it from the ground yeah. up with a brand new battle system on a brand new console. When they want to remake Final Fantasy eight, uh, pull the Dissidia things in, yeah. give it a coat of paint and fuck off. Like it yeah. just doesn't, you know, like if you took the time to remake eight and give it a new battle system, you could maybe get a bunch of new people to buy that game and play that game and like that game. Yeah. Because it would be different again, and yeah. they could, you could retell their story yeah. with more depth. 
So, yeah, like I said, it's uh, I, I understand why they keep going with Seven, but, yeah, I think I think the, the tide's turning on Seven because of how much they, they just focus on it so much. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. final Final Fantasy thing, is I've been playing Awakening, which is the Type-0 iOS game. Oh. It's only been released in China, but for some reason Australia has it. Yeah. Um, it's weirdly fun. Like, it's okay. just a good loop of, like... What is it? It's... It's the story concerns that you're a new person and then you eventually get to class zero and then and set in one of the earlier time loops. Mm-hmm. I think you actually go through a couple time loops in mm-hmm. the game. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm like at Tempest Venus now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, but that's, there's like 50 missions total. And I'm only at like 17. Hmm. So I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to do this a couple times probably. Mm-hmm. Um, the story is just meet people, you know, give you a mission, run off. Like it's, and it's still you go through the similar beats of Tide Zero, but it's like kind of out of order. Mm. Um, like you end up gaining an alliance with Concordia, okay. Dragon Place, and it's, just like, it's a little bit different. But what, what's the gameplay? Is it just the a... gameplay is super free to play, but the ah, missions okay. themselves are you go in, um, go through the mission, like, and it's. You attack and then you build up your little limit break bar and then you press mm-hmm. the icon. You have, to, you have three people in your party, you press the icon, they'll do their super move. And then uh, when they die or time ticks over like 15 seconds or so, you can swap the other two party members out. You're the lead character, so you can stay. Okay. Um, and then so you can use their abilities and then eventually you can use a summon. Oh, okay. So you have to use their limit breaks to build up your summon and then your summon is super strong. And okay. Then they think, and then to do that, beat the final boss at the end, rinse and repeat. Mm-hmm. Oh, run out of energy, go do other stuff to try and get it back. Sort of right. Stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's so many systems in play to make you pay. Hmm. And you can, like, I put like 15 bucks into it. I'm like, I'm good at any of spend anymore. Mm. But um, yeah, it's just super like, and it keeps adding more and more things as you level up. Like, yeah. now I have like a whole garden I can attend to. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Mm, yeah, okay. yeah. 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 No, no. I feel yeah. you. I feel you. Um, and it's, it's, I think it is pretty old, so that's why these systems have just stacked onto each other. Like, yeah. It's a similar thing with Kingdom Hearts uh, Union Cross. Yeah. Is that there's so many things just stacked on, like a pet system now and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Which doesn't make any sense if you're starting out now, but if you had started it and followed it through with all of it, it would make sense because yeah. they're gradually adding it. It's, yeah. it's the MMO systems of like. Yeah. Um, go into an MMO you don't know like me yes. wanting to play 14 not even the story like if it was just 200 hours of story mm. with a simple gameplay system I'd be down for that I'd yeah. away at it but because it's so many gameplay systems just, yeah, ah, yeah. I've been wondering what it would be like of what a person who's jumping into Pokemon Go now would think because now Pokemon Go is just such a different entity to what it was when yeah. it originally started. There's so much to do and there are so many items and so many things that stack on things and things yeah. that do other things that like I would be, because I've been keeping up with it yeah. ever since it came out, like I would be absolutely fascinated to see someone jump into it fresh, no yeah, and be like, what? What is any of this? Tell me what any of this is, and they'd be like, Bleh. I know a couple of people who started last year mm. who had never played Pokemon before, let mine go, mm. and got super into it. Yeah, like, collecting because then the gameplay loop was finally there. Yeah, um, but there's been even more additions since then. Like since one then, like, year, there's been even more. There's like, been the the adventure sync. I think came in uh, that point. Yeah, that's because we were all doing that, and then it came out like, thank fuck. Yeah. Um, and then at Adventure Sync recently, they've added the Team Go Rocket stuff. Yep. Um, which is PVE, which is fine. Mm, yeah. Uh, it's what everyone wanted. It's this complaint you had. They have changed the battle system as opposed to tapping. Um, PVP, it is um, like you do little swipes. Like, yes. Oh, yeah. grass, you just tickle the grass stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gyms yeah. are still the same. Yes, gyms are still the same. But the. Um... One of the biggest changes that has come recently that I have not liked is they've redistributed the item table. Um, And so they've added, and this is a really sneaky thing, it's such a shitty monetizing thing to do. So they've added in the team Go Rocket stuff. 
and their their Pokemon are overpowered. You know, Bulbasaur's that can take out Dragonites if yeah if it's right. Um, they've added that in. They've added in more raids, and they're kind of doing more raid events. Yeah, Oops. Um, that gives you more chances of getting like legendaries and shinies and stuff yeah. like that. But what they've done is they've reorganized the item table so that your spinning of poker stops doesn't get you revives or max revives as often, if at all. Uh, yeah. Um, and they've redistributed that to the friend stuff. Yeah, so you yeah. only get that kind of stuff from gifts. And that's a real fuck you to people who don't play it religiously. Yeah. Um, because you... You you only ever send gifts when you're looking at it, and your friends only send it when you're looking at it. Like yeah. you're you're not getting as many. And the biggest problem with it is that now your poker stops basically just give you berries and pokeballs, and that's it. Which great means I'm not running out of pokeballs. Yeah. But the thing that I was talking to a couple of friends about was that like if they're going to give me nothing but pokeballs and berries in the poker stops all the time, they should not be giving me pokeballs and gifts. Because that's what you still get. You still mostly get, even though they've redistributed the table, I still mostly get Pokeballs and Great Balls from items. And the weird thing is I feel like I'm getting less revives and max revives because I used to get a lot from there. But now you don't because they've introduced now another way for your Pokemon to die, but less ways for you to revive them other than buying max revives out of the Pokestore for coins yeah which is money so like i think that's a real shitty thing they've done there because they had everything they had everything kind of working nicely yeah where you could play the game for free but if you wanted to really go ham you could spend a fair chunk of money yeah. money and there are people i know who do spend money on that game yeah. and i spend money on that game but up the only thing i spend money on is incubators yes like, yeah and that's pretty much it yep yeah. and i think everyone um, yeah. would be happy to do that yeah. but like it's yeah it's it's just a real shitty current change to the monetization yeah. of that game which i don't like yeah. and i hope they fix it and change it or change it back or something like that the thing is that they explained it story-wise like team team rocket came in and stole all the resources and that's why everything's fucked which but that's yeah but then the thing is like does that mean that team rocket team go rocket will eventually leave the game world no it's just a permanent change yeah. um which is fine like i'm happy they explained it storyline wise as well but like it still doesn't it still doesn't yeah, change the fact that it's shitty shit, yeah like it's it's explaining it's explaining a shitty change in game great thanks guys yeah. um it doesn't make me angry at the antagonists of yeah, no. Pokemon Go world it makes me angry at you yeah. um, and it just means I've been playing the game less because now I don't want because now that I don't get the max revives as often or just revives in general yeah. I don't want to do the raids because if I lose half my team or most of my good Pokemon and then I have to go do another raid like yeah. I'm, I'm boned for the second one so I can't get the Pokemon as much as I used to anymore yeah and, like, I was really starting to get into a rhythm with that game and really starting to have fun with it about, like, oh, I'll do a raid and do this and do that and was starting to have, yeah. you know, a really good time with it. But now it's just like, oh, well, I guess I'll just use it as I know, used to, which was yeah. I'll check it when I'm in a place that I've never been before, I'll catch a Pokemon, I'll spin a Poker stop, and then I'll put it away. I think one way to remedy this would be to up the gift count. Like, the, the, so instead of holding yeah. kind of them, you could give 20 or 30 and then be able to just gift more people because I, like that's the thing when you've only got 10 and your friends list is more than 10 i just think that you like, should be I, th- I just think they should just remove the pokeballs from it because the thing that pisses me off about the gifts is that is that is that i can get the same thing from a gift that i can get from a poker stop so what's the point of the gift yeah. now they're like oh you can get more max revives and revives i'm like yes but i'm still only like i'm not getting as many as i used to yeah. i used to get three or four of those every time I opened a set of gifts. Now, if I'm, I'm lucky if I get one revive or max revive out of the seven gifts I open in a day. Yeah. So why do I keep doing it? Because it has no benefit to me. What they should do is remove the Pokeballs um, entirely from that item table. Yeah. And it should just be like, look, it's a 90% chance that you get some Stardust. Like if you want to make it more difficult to get yeah. the revives, I get it. You don't want people having 100 revives and, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. You want to limit it. That's fine. But, you know, make it mostly Stardust. Um, and obviously the thing where, like, if your egg slot is empty, you get an Alolan egg. Yeah. Um, mostly uh, mostly Stardust. Um, maybe maybe that's where you should get some of the, like, like Golden Ras and Silver Pineapps because they're 
Yeah. Yeah, like golden rods you can only get from Raid. raids at the moment. And silver pen apps are only from like special research. Exactly, yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah, right. maybe silver pineapps should go in there for like a one in a hundred you get one of those, yeah. which would be nice. Um, and then um, that that those gifts items should be more of the um, the special evolution items. Yeah, the ones well, that, that are like used to be. Yeah, ones that are like ridiculously difficult to get. Like I haven't seen an upgrade in years. Yeah, um, you know, kind of good, but still like. Yeah, but like you know, there's stuff that you're like, well, how do I even evolve this Pokemon if I don't, you know? And then we'll maybe passes in there. Yeah, Ray Part, mm, maybe. Um, I would more think just like stuff that doesn't like Sinnoh stones. Yeah, I think, Sinnoh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, Sinnoh stones are like impossible to get and there's too many pokemon that use them like it should it should be easier to get those yeah. considering how many of them there are yeah. like there are two pokemon that evolve with a metal coat i get it make that difficult to get yeah but there are like 20 pokemon that evolve with Sinnoh stones i shouldn't have my pokedex yeah. limited by your random number generator the thing like with metal coat is just use a metal or hang around and evolve both pokemon there like mm. it's that just a lure at that point which is yeah, and they've made some changes that I just don't I don't like. So, yeah. but the thing is, it's an evolving mobile game, so they'll make changes again in six months yeah. that I will like. So I'm just leaving but, it as much. And like that's the thing now that we're getting into like Gen Four, which started the complicated evolution processes. We're now getting like standard this yeah standard this poker stop with the specific lure and evolving yeah. Pokemon there. Yeah. Um, and then that's just going to keep like they're introducing Gen Five this month, and so that. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, because they've done Gen Four except for like a few legendaries. That's that's one thing that I do uh, that also bugs me about this is that they they introduce the generations I think a little bit too quickly. Yeah. You, people don't have time to finish off that Pokedex, or they don't have time to, or, or they haven't even released all of the Pokemon in that generation. Like I get it, they're legendaries and mythicals, yeah. but like release them. Get yeah. them all out there so that it's possible without having to... Huh, sweet Pokemon announcement. Um, uh, get, get it enough out there so that people actually have yeah. the ability to get them before moving on to the next gen. Yeah, like that's the thing at the moment. Like, one, like, we're only just getting Giachi and the Quest out yeah. now. Yeah, Gen 3 still hasn't been completed. Yeah, like, Cleckleon still hasn't been released. Like... Yeah. Um, and then there's other stuff. Like, oh, some of my friends didn't know that Gen Four was finished because they haven't seen half of them around. Yeah, like, no, neither have I. Gibble, like yeah, yeah, like Gibble, like I've seen it on the radio, but it was across the river, so I'm like, I'm not getting that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. There's a lot of stuff that they just haven't cleaned up. But again, because it's an ongoing mobile game, yeah. it doesn't really matter because it like the because it's it's around for so long, it will eventually change. There'll be a Gibble community day. Obviously, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. What have you been up to? Um, I have been not a lot like you, yeah. um, but I found myself in a really interesting like conundrum recently, um, because I've been um, finding myself with like a few days off here and there, yeah. and like actually having some time. Um, but the problem was that I would find myself like doing things that I should have been doing, like catching up on stuff, yeah, like movies and television shows and stuff like that. Um, and just catching up on you know being a human being, yeah. Um, which puts myself in the situation where I get to the end of the night and I'm like, oh, I should really play a game. And then I look at the game that I'm playing, which is Fire Emblem, and I'm like, it's 10.30. If I put that in right now, yeah. I'm going to be here till 4 in the morning, so I'm going to leave it. Yeah. So I haven't been playing as much as I would have liked, but I have continued to play Fire Emblem Three Houses. That game continues to be fucking excellent. Um, holy shit. <laughs> um, so a lot of people have been talking about how like this game goes places. Uh, yeah. Um, I still haven't got to the time skip yet. Oh. And this game goes places. Oh. Like, I've just been getting through the point where um, my support levels with certain characters have increased. Um, and there were certain characters that I was really gaining an affinity for because of their quirks and their, their who they are. Who yeah. they are. And they have divulged some reasons as to why they are the way they are. And it is rough. <laughs> Holy shit. I, oh man, like they do not pull any punches in this story or in these characters. I, this has made me triply like more interested in getting to the end of this game and then starting with a different house yeah. to perhaps see some other people. 
um, and see their backstories because if the backstories for these characters that I like are so like um, just heartbreaking and gritty and and real and uh, yeah um, for the people that I like what the hell have they come up with to explain why this cunt is the way he is yep. like that that is that intrigues me to no end um i've continued to kind of let them judge the way they're going but i've now hit that point where i've started to work the systems in my head and realize how they kind of fit together yeah um so i've kind of just recently started to um take a couple of the students and push them in a certain direction rather than letting them dictate the way they want to go. Yeah. Because I'm like, actually, I think you might be better if we do this and kind of pushing them down a path. Um, it's... <sighs> there are still things I don't understand about all those systems, which can be frustrating. Um, I'm still not entirely sure how the whole recruitment thing works, yeah. but I did recruit my first person. <laughs> Remember that teacher I told you who likes to teach, drink, and fuck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's part of my team now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can you recruit people on the battlefield? Like, Fulton style? Okay. No, okay. no. So everyone who's recruitable is in the monastery where you teach. Yeah. Um, and they're indicated on the map where um, anyone who's part of your group is indicated by a blue dot. Mm -hmm. um, anyone who is recruitable is indicated by an orange dot or yeah. yellow dot. Yeah. Um, so if you go up to them and talk to them, you can possibly recruit them. Um, if they're a white dot, they're just an NPC yeah. you can talk to. Um, and I still haven't quite figured it out because I feel like I, I, there's a couple of characters that I would like to recruit. So when you talk to them after they've had their little bit of dialogue, the menus, yeah. the options pop up of like, give them a gift. These are lost items. Talk to them. You can actually like temporarily recruit people in Um uh, what's what's called mission assistance. They don't get any experience and they don't get any like items or anything from the battle, but they can help you out um, and it builds up your support level with them, yeah. which then allows you to possibly recruit them down the line. Yeah. So if your support level is up high enough, you can recruit them regardless of what your stats are. Yeah. Um, but for some of the characters in the, in the world, you talk to them and that menu never pops. And I think it's because either my support, like I need to get my support up to a certain point, yeah. or I also believe, like I know there's a couple of things, like um, there are characters that I believe that you cannot recruit from other houses because they are so loyal to the individual yeah. characters that you can't get them. Um, and vice versa, there are certain systems and triggers in place that make characters really easy to get. So one of them is um, the character Sylvain, who's a womanizer. If you pick the female character, the female character type, the second you're in the monastery, you can recruit him. Okay. Instantly, you can go up and be like, I want to be with you. And because you're a woman and yeah. he's a fucking piece of shit, he'll be like, yeah, sure, whatever. He doesn't care. Okay. Um, whereas if you're the guy, you've got to go through the steps to get him into your team. Yeah. Um, but I believe he's... And again, it's different depending on the house because I believe... It's a lot easier to recruit him if you're in the Black Eagles because a majority of the students are female, so he's okay with that. Yeah. Whereas I think if you're in the... Because I think he's a he's a blue lion. If you're in the Golden Stag, he's less likely to go towards you because most of them are male. So, he, yeah, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it continues to kind of give me more information. Um, I... I'm getting a little bit frustrated in trying to figure out whether I am where I'm supposed to be. Uh, um, I'm, I'm at the right level. Like, I'm, I'm probably a little bit over-leveled, yeah. which is fine. I'm okay with being over-leveled. Yeah. I'm okay with the battle being easy. Um, but because there's so much happening, I, I'm starting to just kind of feel like, am I missing... Like, because I haven't recruited all these people, am I missing something? Am I missing something that I'm supposed to be doing? Because I feel like I'm doing everything I can on my free days and doing all the bits and bobs, but I'm not entirely sure. Because there's so much that opens up. And, like, there are so many levels yeah. that, like, I'm confused at, like... Like, you get a professor level. And the professor level um, determines, like, how much you can do in a day. 
Okay. Like the, how many how many things you can do in a I you know exactly yeah <laughs> um, how many things you can do in a day how many battles you can do on a day off um, what items are available for like upgrade and forging and things like that and I just can't tell whether my professor level is where it needs to be but also I'm not entirely sure how much like how quickly that professor level can increase because like the the experience is like five thousand experience points to the next professor level but every time I do something I get like a hundred. Okay. And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, but then occasionally something random happens and it gives me like 2,000. I'm like, okay, how did I do that? Yeah. I need to know why that ha- What is that? How do I get that? But, and the thing I'm struggling with is, is, is it possible to min-max that? Does that? Is there a way that I can um, uh, make that go faster and go quicker? Or is it a thing where like, look at this point in the game... It's just going to be what it is. Yeah. Um, and everyone's going to kind of be around the same level and you just kind of work with what it is. And then, like, am I still in the technical tutorial stage? Am I 20 hours in and still in the tutorial stage? That's what I was thinking. Like, you could just be stuck in yeah. to certain points in the story and then more recruitables will unlock. Sort of yeah. Thing. And that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Is like, I still haven't quite figured out, am I still in the learning phase of this game? Or have I hit the point where I should be doing all this other shit? Um, cause I only just got up to doing, um, my first paralogue, which is, um, at a certain point in the story, they open up and they're, they're, uh, during your free days, it's a green exclamation mark appears on the screen and it is a side story that is a battle basically yeah. that you can do. And they're only available for a certain amount of time and you need to get them done. And if you don't, yada, yada. And it was a real problem cause I only had one battle point like i only do one battle and when you're looking through the list of battles there are there are battles that don't take any battle points they're like farming you can just go out and battle this thing and get some experience and yada yada um but then there are quests any type of quest takes one battle point yeah and i have like five to do and only one battle point and there are only like three free days in a month or four Uh, so like you kind of like Am I just sacrificing stuff? Is it possible to get all of them done? I don't know. I just got a second one, which looking at the way this month that I'm in is shaping up, I might be able to get a little bit more done, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the paralogues are, they'll open up with like a, hey, you know, a, 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 an interaction between you and a couple of people or a person or two two students or something like that. And then it'll it'll do up a little bit of a, a mini story. Um, and so... You do that mini, you do that little bit of a mini story, and then it leads to a battle or some description yeah. with a slight mechanic tweak. Yeah, okay. So you know, the one I was doing was like, you, you're in a cave thing; they ambush you. Um, it's the first time I, I'd encountered terrain that hurts you, okay. so it's difficult to move through. So it reduces your movement, so you can't, you can't, you don't necessarily get to go all the way through it. Sometimes you have to stop halfway. Yeah. While you're in it, it drops your defense, and then the next turn you take like ten percent damage or something like that it's like lava yeah for um so it's like okay cool now i have to learn how to do that um it was the first time i got to use a pegasus mount noise um which is fun um and so so and made me go cool i'm going to take one of my people and turn them into a pegasus rider because <laughs> that seems fun um so yeah there's a lot of stuff there that kind of happens and like it's the first it was the first battle that i did that wasn't just like kill all the enemies it was like you need to get this particular person to this point in the map um and then i started doing that i was like okay cool i'll do what i normally like kind of normally do with most of my battles at this point is just because you get 10 on the field i just split them into two groups of five with like you know a healer on each side and a magic user on each side and then kind of the rest of it and just split them up because usually no matter where you are in in the map you can kind of split and then kind of come around yeah. so i you know split them up take out the individual enemies on the outside and then by the time i get to the back end of the field where the boss is they're kind of pincer attacked and then that way they're, they're fucked um i started doing that and then all of a sudden um these guys called reinforcements so i had people behind me as well yeah. i was like ah fuck um and then they kind of like pointed me like oh this guy is the reason there are reinforcements i'm like all right cool so i kind of was doing my pincer attack and was like, okay, well, I need to divert all of these guys back this way because he's way over there. Yeah. Um, take him out. All right, cool. That makes life a little bit easier. But in the meantime, a couple of guys on this side got in like a cluster fuck and like one of them was hanging on by a thread and I was like, oh, I don't want to... Mm. 
Um, because the reason I split them up in the way I did that point was that a couple of my guys are a bit underleveled because yeah. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, I was like, I need to bring you guys up because I haven't I haven't picked up anyone to take your place, so I need to bring you guys up a yeah. level. Um, and so I was getting through some battles with them, and they were leveling up, and it was fine. But I didn't want to lose them because I didn't want to lose. I didn't want to um, be in a position where they were gone and then they wouldn't earn any more experience. I still wanted them to be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I kind of like just kind of ran away for a bit and got everything kind of clusterfucky, but then figured my way out of it and got my person to the end. Um, and they're just kind of like little mini stories. They increase the the support between people. You get like a little bit of loot and a little bit of experience for it and stuff like that. Um, I think if I do a few more battles the way I'm going at the moment, I will be significantly overleveled going into the next part. Yeah. Which again, I'm okay with. Um, just because you're overleveled doesn't mean that you still doesn't mean that you're immune to everything in yeah. this game. Um, you can still go into a battle and lose people um, by making a dumb mistake of just like moving them to the wrong place. Like I, I did that last night. I moved a person to a place where I was like, that'll be a good place for them, and then they just got surrounded and just fucking shat on by like 12 different people and i was like okay that was a bad move luckily you've got the time thing so yeah. you can go backwards a little bit and rethink your strategy um but yeah it continues to get like this early on it has gotten to some dark places and places where i'm like fuck holy shit um so I'm really, really interested. I, I, I really think you should play this game. Yeah, like I, I really think you should play this game. It probably would be a Christmas game at this point. Yeah. Um, which that's always, yeah. Yeah. A nice meaty RPG. I don't. Yeah. I, I want to say I don't know if I'll do it for three houses, but I'll make that decision when I get to it. No, no. Well, again, I, this is the kind of game where I think like everyone who buys it will have it as part of their collection forever. Yeah. Because you can play it through once. And then you don't have to play this next house immediately. Just yeah. let it sit. And then one day when you've run out of games or you just don't have like a thing you want to play, yeah. you can go through your collection and go, oh, you know what? I might replay Fire Emblem and try a different house and see how that goes. Yeah. And by that point, enough of the story probably faded so that when you're doing the parts that are the same, it's yeah. not that big of a deal. Yeah. But I'm telling you, character-wise, they're so different that like, although there might be plot points that are the same, it will still be interesting yeah. to see how the individual characters react because yeah. like already... Um, there's a lot of foreshadowing in this game that's a little bit ham-fisted <laughs> there's a little there's, there was a little bit there where I was like okay well I see where this is going Um, which was funny <laughs> I was like I was sitting there I'm like yeah okay everything else in this game is either subtle or fun um, or dark and deep but this is the first time where I've been like yeah all right <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah, uh huh. Yep. It's just very much them being like, uh, wouldn't it be a shame if this happened? And you're like, okay, well, I guess that's happening then. Down to this happening. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um, but no, that game continues to be rad. Yeah. Um, just absolutely, just uh, so much fun. Um, I, yeah, like I said, I've been struggling with the fact that I've been needing to be up late and then, like, if I start it, this game will suck me in for five to six hours. Yeah. Like I will not be able to put that controller down for so long that I need to be able to make sure that like I either need to have a day off or I need to start it earlier in the night because it just isn't going to happen for me any other way. Yeah. Um, because like even even though last night I played a bit more and did set aside a good chunk of time and did play it for a while, I still got to the end of my PlayStation and was like, <clears throat> play session and was like, I just want to play a little bit more, but it's like midnight. I should probably go to bed. Yeah. Um, is it? Yeah. Is this gameplay thing very much one more thing? Like it's loop, just like I fed you one more thing. Is that only going to take two minutes? That's only going to take two minutes. Like it's, it's, I can't, in terms of like the big combats, like yeah, that that that's going to take half an hour. Or yeah, I mean, depends then, like, on the battle. Running around talking to people. I mean, that's the thing is that you can. Um, it's not really, kind of, but not really. Yeah. Because when you do a free day, when you go and do your running around talking to people, you start and it's kind of like, there's a nice clean break every month yeah. where like you finish the month and everything from the previous month is wrapped up and this is a whole new month and there's a whole new things to do. So when you start a month and you jump into the world, there's there's nothing, nothing so far has drawn you in. You're just there. You're like, yeah. okay, it's a clean break. I did everything from last month. I'm good. So you can, in theory, which is usually where I do it, I clean break at a month. 
you can you can in theory just walk away at that point. Hit the save button, walk yeah. away. But the problem is it's not the one more thing. It's the fact that like as soon as I'm dropped into that world, I'm like, okay, I need to know. I need to know how this person's doing, how that person's yeah. doing, why this person's there. I need to find this information. And even though it, like there's no reason for me to do it right now because realistically I've done all I needed to do. I've done my levels, all that kind yeah. of stuff. The characters draw me in in such a way. I haven't talked to this person in a month. I need to go speak to them. I need to go speak to this person. I need to go speak to that person. I need to do this, that, and the other. Um, It feels more like... It's almost more like a gotcha game in that, like, every time you're dropped in, there are notifications. There are, like, little things on the map. Like, this person wants to talk, and this person wants to speak, and all this kind of stuff. And you're like, okay, cool. i got to do all of it now. All of it now. I need to see every single one of these things, and then I will go and take a nap. Um, (laughs) But the problem is, when you do all of that, you do all of that and it makes you want to do the next thing, which will be a battle or something like that, yeah. which will take another half an hour. And then when you finish that battle, the next part of the story starts and then you're back in the next month and it drops you in again. So it's not like a one more thing. Yeah. It's just that like it, it, makes you, it makes you pick up each breadcrumb and you just keep going and going and going yeah. and going and then you just lose track of six hours. Um yeah, it's not the same feeling as yeah, the one I, more I thing. It, yeah. It's just, it's just because if it was that feeling, if it was that feeling, it would be easier to get away. Yeah, because it is easier to get away from a one more thing game because you just basically just go, oh well, that's that's, that's the end of it. Like yeah. I'm done. Um, but this game just draws you in in such a way that like. It's not telling me to do one more thing. I'm telling myself to do one more thing yeah. because I'm like, I know I want to know. Yeah. I just, just want to spend. Because that the other part of it is that when you are in that open world scenario, you're not actually really doing anything. Like in terms of progressing the story, you're just yeah. talking to students. Yeah. And I just want to spend a little bit more time with Adel Guard or with Bernadetta or yeah. with Dedu or with <laughs> with Caspar or yeah. any of these guys. Like I just want to spend a little bit more time with them. It doesn't actually affect my gameplay. It doesn't increase my levels of anything. It doesn't actually, you know, increase damage or yeah. health or anything like that. All it does is give me more story, and that's all I want. Yeah. So it's more like a page turn a book, mm. where you just kind of keep going. Yeah. And like you can stop at any point. It's not forcing you to go one more thing. Yeah. But you and yourself go. Oh, I'll just get to the end of the chapter. I'll just get to the end of the chapter. Yeah. Um, and something happens at the end of the chapter. You're like, oh. What are they doing now? Well, it's but it's more like a it's more like a really good like nonfiction book where it's, there's no cliffhanger. It's not like ooh, this is gonna happen, scary thing next chapter, and you're like, oh, I have to find out what happens. It's just kind of like that ends, and you go, that's really interesting. What a fascinating thing. I have to read more. I have to. Yeah. It's it's you know again, it's the game is not compelling you or pulling you into play more. Yeah. You just do it to yourself because they've done such a good job of the yeah. writing. Um, so I will continue to play that and I will hopefully get a review up, but boy, oh boy, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a task. Um, but I am enjoying every second of it. Nice. Yeah. No, no, that's literally been it. Yeah. Literally been it. Uh, I honestly like with Fire Emblem, I just don't have enough time to do anything else. That's like fair. it is the game that I am playing at the moment. I have, um, I will say one thing is that I've been playing it pretty much exclusively docked on the TV. Um, you can play it in handheld mode, but it feels wrong. For me, at least. Um, I just don't feel like it's the kind of handheld game. Um, I might be taking it with me. Like I don't think I'll be finishing it before I get married. Yeah. So I'll probably be taking it with me on my honeymoon on yeah. the flight. Um, so I probably will play it in doc- yeah. uh, um, handheld mode at some point. Um, but it just... Yeah, it feels better docked and on the big screen yeah. than it does in handheld mode. I think it's because also like when you're in handheld... Because I've got the original Switch... The battery life's not great, so yeah. I mean, it's fine. It I I don't it, yeah. yeah, but Fire Emblem does burn through it. It's yeah. so, like I sat on the couch and played like half an hour and lost twenty five percent of battery. I was like, okay, well I better put it in the dock. Yeah. Um, and it just yeah, but and the thing is because you want to play so much of it, anything that puts a restrictive timer on how much you're playing yeah. is annoying. Yeah. And so like I don't want to sit there and be like, oh, I'm gonna lose battery, but I want to keep playing. Like I just don't. So just better put it in the dock, put it in the Joy-Con grip. I'm good. <laughs> Get yourself a USB-C charger. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to buy one of those like portable stands and the USB-C charger so that when I'm on the flight, I can just sit it up, plug it yeah. in, and play for 14 hours. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a long flight. Um, but yeah, it, it, 
that this will be the biggest test for my Switch because I've done smaller flights before and not really played it because like yeah. an hour flight isn't long enough for yeah, me. Yeah, no. um, but like a fourteen-hour flight overseas is going to be yeah. yeah, that's going to be good. 